Hi friends, uh, this is a small presentation uh, which describes the uh, wavelength of a signal versus the length of the interconnect. This is an important uh, result which will uh, which is useful to describe whether a piece of trace on a board can be considered as a learned model or it can be considered as a distributed model. The distributed model results into the transmission line effects. Now, uh, in order to give a simplistic view, uh, let us let us try to figure out an analogy for it. Suppose uh, you are on a on a road with a speed breaker, and suppose you are driving a big car or a big say bus. The kind of interaction, uh, the kind of experience when you interact with that speed breaker will be of one kind. And if I consider the same road with the same speed breaker, and now in, if I consider a toy car or an ant. Uh, the kind of experience which these guys will have will be completely different for them it will be like going top the hill and then coming down so just keep this picture in mind this will be used as an analogy and i will come back to it in the end okay going for a technical uh, let us see let us try to see mathematically what we can drive with these two ways so suppose you have a voltage source and load which are connected through two idle piece of conductors uh, with with a length defined as uh, defined and shown in the screen, and suppose the voltage source that we are feeding in is like a time is a sinusoidal waveform with a defined time period and frequency. Suppose we do also define two point two node points A and B where we can measure the voltages. And let at suppose at a particular time instant T naught, what we feed in a voltage V one at the at the node A. Now. Once you feed in a voltage at node A, uh, the, the, the same voltage uh, and if you try to measure the voltage at node, node B, there are, there are only two cases when the node B will also give you the same voltage, but you will be able to measure the same voltage V1 or node B. Firstly, uh, if the wave from node A travels to node B at an infinite speed and the second could be that the node A and node B are so close to each other. That means the length of the interconnect is very small. Now the first argument is uh, is not true because we know that a signal, a wave cannot travel with an infinite speed. It can travel only with a speed which is limited maximal to the speed of light. So as a result, uh, we can we can define a term called as the transit time. Is the, it is defined as the time which the wave takes to travel from point A to point B. Okay, another thing is like, okay, at after say at a particular time instant T1, the voltage at the B, I'm able to measure V1. So T1 minus T0 defines the transit time. But when I measure the voltage V1 at T1, by that time, if I try to go and see what is the voltage at A, it could be something different. So if you see in this picture, it could be possible that at T1, when I was measuring V1 on my B node, I could be measuring actually V2 at node A. So clearly, you could you will see a difference in the in the in the voltages at the two nodes. Now, in the circuit in the circuit analysis. Uh, we, we never we never used to consider the, the size of the element so but what you are seeing here is that the uh, the size of the element which is defined by the length if this is comparable to the time domain signal to the sign uh, to the time period of the sine uh, wave which we are applying you could you could see a different completely different results so uh, in the circuit theory uh, all our understanding was based on one equation which was that the time period of this signal this time period of this signal is very very large than the propagation delay so if we have this equation we will never encounter these transit time effects which we just described so if you if we try to solve this equation further by uh, breaking this transit time as as the distance traveled by the speed of the wave so if you solve this let uh, the v will v defines the velocity of the signal so and if you bring this v to to the left hand side and try to solve it you will finally get a relationship between the wavelength and the length so what this relationship tell you tells you that if the wavelength of the signal is pretty large 
as compared to the length of the interconnect, you can consider this piece of wire as lump. And that was indeed the, the, uh, the thing that is being used in the circuit theory. That is why in the circuit theory, it, it, it does not matter that if you have, if your, if your piece of interconnect or the, or the electrical component is uh, uh, one centimeter long or it's one meter long, they never used to consider it. But, and in order to, in order that they should not consider it, they satisfy these equations. But as we are moving to higher frequencies, our wavelength is going down. And so you can see that our wavelength is becoming comparable to the length. So in such cases, we cannot consider it to be a lump model. So we have to consider it as a distributed model. This is a graphical way to understand it. Suppose this is the length of the interconnect and this is the wavelength of the signal. If the length of the interconnect is greater than the wavelength of the signal, you can clearly see we can have different potential. So you cannot consider it to be a lump model. You have to go for a distributed model analysis. Whereas if, if you're if your length of the interconnect is so small as compared to the wavelength, you will not expect uh, a difference in the potential uh, V1 and V2. Remember in the last picture. So here you can consider the lump model where most of the circuit analysis is working for us. So and now let me come back to the same picture. In this picture, consider this uh, stop uh, over as an interconnect. We are not changing the length of the interconnect. What we are changing is the size of the car. Consider the size of the car to the wavelength of the signal. When the wavelength of the signal is so big that the size of the interconnect is very, very less, you can consider it to be a lump. But when you, when, when, it's, when the size of your wavelength shrinks down or in terms you start uh, going towards higher frequency, your wavelength becomes comparable to the size of the interconnect and the experience it will have will be completely different. And so you will have to go into the distributed model. So in this way, uh, you have to, uh, if you have a, uh, have a structure uh, and you are giving a high frequency input to it, you need to understand the wavelength of the signal what you are giving, feeding into the structure. And then you have to compare it with the structure length and then you have to con then only you can decide whether you can consider that structure to be a lump or you have to consider it as a distributed or the transmission line effect. I hope this gives you a sneak peek into the transmission line effect or relationship between the wavelength and the length of interconnect. In case you have any feedbacks to improve this, please let me know. Thanks. Bye.